I now invite you to rise in body or spirit as the procession begins. Let us rise. Welcome. Welcome and thank you for gathering here today. A few of us are in person and many of you are online, no matter where you are. Welcome. Isabel chose Let It Be a Dance for her ordination theme. How perfect that we dance between the worlds of what it means to be present. Thank you for all the singers and the musicians who helped lead us in. And for all the ministers, welcome here today. I'm the Reverend Dr. Marion Stewart. It is my pleasure to serve this congregation, the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus, as senior minister. Over time, I've led countless worship services, taught classes, attended meetings and meetings and meetings, and much more. But every now and then, every now and then, something special comes along. Today is one of those occasions. It is with great pleasure and privilege to honor Isabel's call to ministry. Her ordination today marks a transition from want to be a minister to official minister. To set the stage, I'd like to just say, Isabel, congratulations. This is just a wonderful, wonderful occasion. And before we go further, we need to acknowledge that we gather here today on land that was inherited by indigenous peoples long before our arrival. 
the Adena, the Hopewell, the Wyandotte, the Miami, the Seneca, the Cayuga. Some remain here today, but most were removed in 1830. Let us hold this history and with honesty and awareness. We have special guests among us today. We extend a very special welcome to Isabel's parents, Dariel Mayer, Isabel's mother, Charlotte, uh, Charlie Omquist, Isabel's stepfather, who was also Isabel's religious exploration teacher for several years, starting when she was eight years old. Isabel also has several other family members here today, her brother Russell, and uncles and aunts, Jenny, Mike, Don, Cheryl, Robbie, Nancy, Keith, Maggie, and Judith. Welcome to you all. Members and leaders of other Unitarian Universalist congregations are here as well. These are UUs who have helped shape Isabel into the wonderful person and minister she is today. Again, welcome. We're so glad you're here today. Now, Isabel's parents, Darielle and Charlie, will offer our chalice lighting. Darielle and Charlie. And if Charlie will unmute, we can hear our chalice lighting words. Well, I apologize for that. <laughs> we like the chalice with the words of the Reverend Teresa Soto. Some people are used to keeping rules. Don't cross the street when the light is red, only sensible. It turns out that keeping rules isn't the same as keeping covenant, which asks us, instead of keeping a bright line, to keep our promises. So what have we promised ourselves? to this moment in time and place, to this community and even tenderly interconnected, this planet. We promise ourselves to the idea that we are each and all human beings. We promise that there is something moving between us that we cannot tame and cannot measure. The chalice is a reminder that what flame we keep inside us cannot light the way. The light must spill to shine. The thing you must be is yourself, unadulterated, shedding the willingness to journey alone as though you are made of something hard and unforgivable. You are human, you belong right here, right now. And together we will chase away the sickness, the secrets, and leave only the open possibility that the future is a space for growth. Thank you, Charlie and Dario, our chalice is lit. Good afternoon, everybody. I am the Reverend Tom Emanuel, and I am the uh, Associate Minister at the First Congregational Church of Long Beach, California, and I am delighted to be able to offer our centering moment this morning. Isabel and I have walked our respective roads to ordination together and she actually preached at my ordination in the United Church of Christ. So I hope, Isabel, that this song returns the favor. This is called Invocation, Isabel's Dance. You 
can lower your defenses. You belong here with me. You belong in the dark. You were not made for despair You don't need to fear That the spirit of life Hasn't guided you here To this hour, to this place No debt to be paid Just grace upon grace the wild geese flying over the sea oh, oh. this is only the beginning Light of a palm, the first step of a dance in the direction of home in all our brokenness. We want in the sun. This is what we were made for. This is where we belong to each other. Belong in the calm, benedicting these bodies and welcoming all. So don't be afraid, just reach out your hand and join us. Join in the dance. Join in. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom, for introducing the dance and what a lovely set of dancers. Yes, we should all join in the dance. Uh, and now I welcome Sky Williams Tao, Isabel's friend from Star King School for the Ministry. They will be introducing the offering. Welcome, Sky. The offering for this ceremony will be split between two organizations that are supporting Unitarian Universalism in thriving in this time. The first recipient is the Living Tradition Fund, which is a vital and life-saving well of generosity for UU seminary students, ministers, and other religious professionals. 
This fund reduces the burden of student loan debt and offers support in times of medical crisis, loss of income, and family emergency. The Living Tradition Fund allows our religious professionals to serve this faith well every day because we know that in our hardest times, we are held by your generosity. The second recipient is Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism, or BLUE for short. BLUE is committed to expanding the power and capacity of Black Unitarian Universalists, to providing support, information, and resources to Black UUs, and to justice making and liberation. Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism is leading this religion to widen the circle of our beloved community and to truly answer the call of the faith in this moment. Information about how to make your donation to these two crucial organizations will be shown in a moment. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Sky, for your wonderful words, prompting us to be generous, not just of spirit, but also in supporting others, especially those in ministry and Black Lives of Unitarian Universalism. Thank you, Sky. Thank you also to Nathan Hamm on the piano, Mark Merchant, bass, and Ted Royalty on drums. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your music, as we all do. And now, Something very special. Isabel, we have a time for all ages presented by our first Unitarian Universal Church of Columbus youth group. Take it away, youth. Dancer Among Dancers. Once upon a time, a young child realized that she wanted to be a dancer. It was winter and she was in the audience of a giant theater watching the Nutcracker. The dancing and music was so beautiful that it filled up her eyes and ears and heart and mind. 
and then it spilled into her legs and arms, and she just couldn't help but jump up from her seat and twirl around in the aisle. And she thought to herself, maybe one day, if I am very, very lucky, I will be a dancer. The child found many places to practice her dancing, moving down the street holding hands between grown-ups, twirling with the autumn leaves at her favorite park and her favorite, weaving through the forest of legs at coffee hour on, at church on Sunday on the way to the donuts. At school she took classes in West African dancing. She jumped and scooted and hopped and loved it. And she thought to herself, maybe one day, if I am very, very lucky, I will be a dancer. The child, who was by now a teenager, grew older, she grew busier. At school there were classes in modern dance and ballet and hip-hop, and she tried them all and loved them. At school there were also classes in math and economics and history and art, and she tried them all and loved them. And she thought to herself, maybe one day, if I am very, very lucky, I will know what I want to do when I grow up. And then it was time for her piano lesson, and she forgot that she wanted to be a dancer. The teenager grew into a young adult, and then an older young adult. And she spent her time doing math and economics and reading history and doing a little bit of art and playing a little bit of piano. And every time she got together with her friends and they put on music, she danced, danced, danced. And she enjoyed it, and that was enough. Then one day, a terrible, scary thing happened, and she woke up in the hospital bed. And she couldn't move her legs, even when she tried. And she couldn't talk, because there was a machine helping her breathe. Her family was there, and her friends were there, and a nurse was there, and the nurse sang, Every little thing's gonna be alright. And our friend, the one who wanted to be a dancer, she moved her shoulders to the beat. Every little thing's gonna be alright. And the nurse said, Honey, you are a dancer. And the dancer nodded her head ever so slightly and smiled. Even though it was very scary and terrible that she was in the hospital, and her body was so changed, and she didn't know how it would change more, she was a dancer. Her body kept changing. One day she wiggled her toes, another day she got out of bed and rolled herself around in the room in a wheelchair. Another day she learned to breathe without the machine. Another day she started talking again ever so softly. Many days went by. The dancer learned to walk with help. The dancer learned to walk without help. The dancer learned to walk down the street very slowly. The dancer learned to walk down the street very slowly, humming very softly. One day, she was walking slowly down the street, humming softly, and a stranger asked her very loudly, What happened? And she said nothing, because she didn't know what to say. A leaf twirled down at her feet. Another day, she was walking down the street, chatting, and someone asked her, looking at her body, what happened? And she said, oh honey, it's a long story. Another day she was walking into coffee hour, humming, at, and someone asked her, what happened? And she said, I became a dancer. And he said, me too. And someone else said, me too. And someone else shouted, I'm a dancer too. And someone else moved between them all on their way to the donuts. 
The dancer's body kept changing as she grew older. More and more, she stopped forgetting that she was a dancer. And one day, when she was moving somewhat slowly, humming a bit off tone, weaving around friends on the way to the donuts, telling long stories and listening to them, she suddenly realized that if she was very, very lucky, someday she would be old and creaky and wise and still a dancer among dancers. Ah, uh, I think I need Kleenex. I don't know about you, but what a beautiful story. Thank you so much, Caroline, for reading the story and for the youth group for supplying, drawing, creating the images. Oh my goodness, what a story, a life story, a story of a dancer. Thank you. Now, let us welcome the Reverend Kimberly Quinn Johnson. She's joining us from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of South Fork of Long Island. Isabel and Kimberly served together on the board of the UU Women's Federation and welcome Reverend Johnson. Thank you so much. I am all the way here for this ordination theme let it be a dance. And for this story, I too love dance. I love watching other bodies dance. I treat myself annually to a show of the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater of Harlem, back when we could do things like go to theaters. And a probably little known fact about me is that I love to dance. But this is probably little known because I don't dance in public. I just don't dance in public. And I don't think I'm alone in this not dancing in public. Part of why I don't dance in public is because I don't want to look silly. I don't want to look like I don't know what I'm doing. And so I don't dance in public. And that's a shame. The dancer and choreographer Martha Graham once said that dance is the hidden language of the soul. Dance for people all around the world from the beginning of time has served as a site of healing, release, connection, praise, and blessing. Dance brings us out of our heads and into our bodies to experience the world in a different way. Dancing in ritual and ceremony has the power to create 
a kind of collective effervescence, bonding communities together. Dancing releases energy that changes the world. One of my favorite pieces of dance is the mistake waltz. I wonder if you have seen this before. It's a movement in Jerome Robbins' comedy ballet, The Concert. And so you have six dancers performing a ballet with mistake after mistake. First, one dancer is out of place. Another goes right when she's supposed to go left. One dancer seems to be off in her own little world. One misses her cue altogether. One dancer kind of shoves another into place. It is hilarious, but also beautiful. In part because we know that this is all part of the show. But sometimes, sometimes our lives are like this dance and it is not part of the show. And that doesn't feel hilarious. It can feel humiliating and maybe a little bit scary. I sometimes feel as if I am dancing out of sync. Do you? Out of sync because I don't know the moves or out of sync because the music is too fast or too slow. Or maybe it's a song I'm not expecting, a song I haven't rehearsed to. A song that I don't even know and just don't know how to dance to. The thing about dancing is that when it's joyous and free, it doesn't really matter if we miss a step. As long as we keep dancing, the thing about dance is that at some point, it involves letting go. It entails handing over some control to a partner or a team so that we can dance together. It requires trying something that might make us look or feel weird or silly. It demands opening up to the music, the rhythm of the world around us so that we can move with the flow. The joy of dancing is not in the perfect ballet. The joy of dancing is in the letting go and the opening up to the world around us. Because sometimes we are dancing the right choreography, the right moves in the right time, but the person next to us or the people all around us are out of sync, those yahoos. The ballet that I mentioned is called The Concert, but the full parenthetical title is The Perils of Everybody. And isn't that just the way? Trying to dance with other people, with everybody, can be perilous or at least exasperating. Living in community like dancing with other people can be exasperating. It can feel as if we are in that mistake waltz where nothing goes right and everything is out of sync. Do you ever feel that way? Out of sync because the people around you are just not doing it right. Dancing in the wrong direction missing cues, dancing off in their own show altogether. It can be exasperating. But I wanna tell you this afternoon that it is worth the effort. One of the beautiful things about this faith, Unitarian Universalism, is the invitation to the dance. Here we are encouraged to be in relationship. We are encouraged to join our efforts with our siblings near and far. We are encouraged to learn new songs and new moves. 
and we are encouraged to accept our neighbors who are out of sync with grace. Isabel is reminding us of this invitation. Isabel's ministry is our invitation to the dance. It is an invitation to create something beautiful and complicated, graceful, and gloriously imperfect. This afternoon, we recognize Isabel's ministry and her invitation to let it be a dance. We honor the beautiful way that Isabel is a partner in that dance. And this afternoon, we also affirm Isabel's leadership in this dance. She is already a minister to so many individuals and communities. I have witnessed and experienced Isabel as a pastor, the care that she takes with those around her, the love that she brings to every interaction, the commitment to practice curiosity, the attention to relationship, to wellness, and to healing, and to joy. I have witnessed and experienced Isabel as a pastor, and I imagine that you have as well. This act of ordination recognizes Isabel's partnership and her leadership. In our tradition, it is the congregation not a pope or a bishop or a session, not even the Unitarian Universalist Association itself ordained ministers into this faith. In some ways, an ordination is a setting apart. A person is set apart to lead, to guide. But we Unitarian Universalists understand this more as a calling forth. Our clergy claim no special relationship to divinity. We assert no singular class or caste fated to serve in this way. Instead, we call forth individuals from our pews from among us who have committed to lead and to guide with skill and love. We call forth individuals who have dedicated their time to study and to practice. Individuals like Isabel, who even with their tremendous skill and experience are always still learning, always still growing. And we recognize that this thing that we ask them to do they cannot do alone. We ordain clergy to lead and to guide us as we do the work to care for each other in the world. Our dance is needed now more than ever. Another dancer and choreographer, Agnes DeMille said, the truest expression of a people is in its dances and its music. Bodies never lie. Now, as much as ever, when our world seems to be in such disarray, in the midst of a pandemic, uncertainty, environmental destruction, as we seek loving and creative ways out of systems of domination and oppression, gender violence around the world and at home, this ever present drumbeat of institutional racism. Isabel's invitation is not just to work, not just to serve, but to dance. I want to end with a sharing from the poet Alice Walker. In her book of poems, Alice Walker reminds us that hard times require furious dancing. She tells it this way. 
I am the youngest of eight siblings. Five of us have died. I share losses, health concerns, and other challenges common to the human condition, especially in these times of war, poverty, and greed that are quite beyond the most creative imagination. Sometimes it all feels a bit too much to bear. Once a person of periodic deep depressions, I have become now matured into someone I never dreamed I would become, an unbridled optimist who always sees the glass as always full of something. It may be half full of water, precious in itself, but the other half, there's a rainbow that could only exist in the vacant space. I have, Alice Walker says, learned to dance. It isn't that I didn't know how to dance before. Everyone in my community knew how to dance, even those with several left feet. I just didn't know how basic it is for maintaining balance. That Africans are always dancing and their ceremonies and their rituals shows an awareness of this. It struck me one day while dancing that the marvelous moves African Americans are famous for on the dance floor came about because the dancers, especially in the old days, were contorting away various knots and stresses. Some of the lower back movements handed down to us that have seemed merely sensual were no doubt created after a day's work bending over a plow or a hoe or slave driver's plantation. Wishing to honor the role of dance in the healing of families, communities, and nations, I hired a local hall and a local band and invited family and friends from near and far to come together on Thanksgiving to dance our sorrows away, or at least to integrate them more smoothly into our daily existence. The next generation of my family mourning their own loss, the recent death of a mother, created a spirited line dance that assured me that though we have all encountered our share of grief and troubles, we can still hold the line of beauty, form, and beat. No small accomplishment in a world as challenging as this one. Hard times require furious dancing. Each of us is the proof. Hard times require furious dancing. Each of us is the proof. I am so honored and so grateful to be invited into the joy of Isabel's ministry. May it indeed be a dance. Hi, I'm Deb Balio. I'm honored to be the artist who was given the task of creating this stole for Isabel today. Uh, it's just a delight, and I'm, I'm doing this on behalf of the congregation. This is their gift. I must first say that this was really a joyful experience. I really had a good time doing this because I was able to meet Isabel in person and see her and talk to her and share stories with her. And that was so wonderful. So when I start an artwork, what do I do? 
Um, first, I choose a theme. Well, this was a chosen theme. It was let it be a dance. Then I choose a medium. Well, it's got to be some sort of fabric. So this is a cotton sateen that I used. Then I have to get to content. So Isabel and I embarked on a conversation about what she likes, what drives her passion, what art, what music, what nature, um, you know, anything, what colors, uh, and, and, and all of that. So Isabel, her favorite colors, it turns out, are jewel tones, and it's fuchsia, and a teal, and an orange, and some other colors too. Um, and I thought, oh, this will be interesting. She likes Tennessee mountains. She likes abstract art. She likes, she used to play the piano. She, oh, guess what? She likes spirals. I love spirals. That was just so cool. She creates art herself. She makes collages. All these things I was learning it with, from her. So I went home and took my sketchbook and started just drawing out some things and getting some ideas of movement. And I drew some spirals and I did some lines that waved back and forth. And out of it came this piece. Um, I chose the Tennessee hills, I call the mountains hills, uh, with the river floating down and the spiraling chalice flame, which is the rising sun over the mountains. And over here, I have the dancer with her beautiful skirt, with a sort of feathery, um, feathery skirt flow to it. And if you look closely, when you get a chance, you'll see those are piano keys. So I tried to get most of everything in on this lovely fuchsia background. Um, and I wanted it to be personal. So there was one more thing to do. I asked Isabel for some words that she would like to put inside. So that was one surprise. And then I put in a second surprise, which I'm not going to tell right now because it's a surprise for her to find. Um, so uh, I have to say, again, this was a pleasure, Isabel. I really enjoyed doing this, and thank you. And I have to say to Lisa, uh, would you do the honors of presenting this stole to Isabel on this occasion of her ordination? There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. <laughs> In the Unitarian Universalist tradition, the members of each congregation alone take up the power and privilege of ordaining ministers. We confer the sacred charge upon our ministers, entrusting them with the lifelong task of ministry. The act of ordination bestows the authority of religious leadership, the title of reverend, and the privilege to wear a stole. Today, we have the honor and responsibility of adding another minister to the lineage of clergy that reaches far back in time and far forward into the future. Isabel, we acknowledge your years of service and preparation for the professional ministry. We acknowledge that you stand before us credentialed by the Ministerial Fellowship Committee of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations. By a unanimous vote of the members of this congregation, we offer you ordination, a privilege bestowed upon us by the nature of the free church. Among us and wherever you are called to serve, we would have you preach the word of truth in freedom and in love, ministering alike to our joys and sorrows, setting forth no less by your example than by your precept, the principles of our free faith. Are you ready to enter upon this ministry? I am ready. We, the members of the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus, recognize your sense of calling to serve the ministry and do hereby ordain you to the Unitarian Universalist ministry. We would have you speak truth to us as you see it. Teach us and our children of the wonder and mystery of life and each other. 
challenge us in witnessing to our moral and ethical concerns. Share with us our human joys and sorrows. Celebrate with us the principles of our free faith and serve us and the wider community with love. I now ask the members of the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus to join me in the act of ordination by repeating the following phrases out loud or in the chat. You may unmute briefly if you wish. We invite all others to remain in honored witness. We affirm your ministry. We affirm, we your, affirm, ministry. affirm, affirm your ministry. ministry. We, encourage your ministry. We, we encourage your ministry. We encourage your ministry. Your ministry. We celebrate your ministry. We celebrate your ministry. We ordain you into ministry. We ordain you into ministry. I receive your ordination. I meet your trust in me with dedication and accountability to our shared faith. I will listen to you and to any covenantal community I serve, <clears throat> opening my heart to your truth and your questions, and I will support your growth. I will listen to my colleagues receiving their experience, strength, and hope, and sharing mine in service of our collective good. I will listen to my body and care for myself, affirming the inherent worth and dignity of every person starting here. I will listen to the community beyond these walls and the voices of our ancestors joining in the healing of our larger culture, divesting from whiteness and violence and making amends and reparations for harm. And I will listen to the energy of love and creation, which I call God, grounding my choices and leadership in a power greater than myself. I say yes to you. I say yes to the call. I am ready. It is with joy and enthusiasm that we recognize and affirm your ordination. May yours be a ministry of compassion, imagination, and vision rooted in the sure knowledge that you are loved and supported. In this world of brokenness, pain, and possibility, may you carry with you the blessing of all of us wherever you serve. Will the larger community of friends and family, colleagues and companions, Please join in this sacred ritual by repeating the following phrases out loud or in the chat. You may unmute briefly if you wish. We support you. We support, support you. you. Love you. We love you. Love you. Love you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We send you out into the world. We send you out into the world. We send you out into the world. Send you out into the world. Hooray! <laughs> hey, Isabel. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> Reverend Dr. Isabel Call, go forth a minister of this tradition, knowing that the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus commissions you for we know that you are fully capable of carrying the weight of your commitments with grace. May our faith in you give you the strength you need to be the change you wish to see in the world and let it be a dance. Bear mute again.
Isabel, I have known you a long time since you were a small child. Watching you and my daughter play, I saw in you a bold, creative spirit, undaunted by convention, full of vision and big ideas. You were the child who told her friends that you would be the first woman president of these United States. Can't and not were not in your vocabulary. The world mattered to you. The health and happiness of people in that world mattered. You saw the importance of sustaining the natural world. So you did something about it. You engaged with causes, tried new things, volunteered. You let your voice be heard. You have danced your convictions with beauty and grace. Even then, I saw in you this call to ministry. You are a leader a nurturer, a pioneer. Dr. Reverend Dr. Elizabeth Call, this beloved community helped raise you with the potential to become who you have become. It is what you've done with that potential, expanding it, shaping it, facing into the heart of it, exploding it. That makes us say how proud we are of you. As you cross this threshold, May you continue to blaze with fury against injustice, warm the souls of those around you, nurture hope, and live a joyous life. We watch with amazement the path, path you are forging and delight in what you are becoming. May you share these gifts with all you encounter in life and ministry, and may you always remember to dance. We bless you. Isabel, my first involvement with you began when I was board president 
and you were the youth board member. I was immediately struck with how engaged you were with life, with our church. I followed your growth over the years and have seen your engagement blossom, especially regarding humanity, human actions, and morality. Today, our beloved community blesses you for who you are at your very core, who you have become, your analytical skills, your emotional sensitivity, and especially for your love and care for others. Through your experiences, your education, and your personal will to engage with humanity, you have developed a wonderful capacity to contribute to the world through your developing ministry. As you cross this threshold, I know that you have found your calling and may you continue to engage in life as you serve your church, associated and global communities and the UUA. I want to close by reading the beginning of a poem by William Stafford entitled, A Ritual to Read to Each Other. Quote, if you don't know the kind of person I am, and I don't know the kind of person you are, a pattern that others made may prevail in the world. And following the wrong God home, we may miss our star, end quote. Isabel, you are charting your own wonderful pattern in the world. And I know that in addition to dance sharing, you will share stars with all who are wise and caring enough to stargaze with you. Blessings from our from TVUUC. Reverend Isabel. And doesn't that have a nice ring to it? You have been described as having unique talents and considerable abilities. The, new, the unique talent and ability that has impressed and influenced me the most is your great strength and courage. Your postdoctorate path led you to work at a foreign country. You held fast to your beliefs during difficult times. You've worked as a chaplain to people with emotional difficulties. You faced physical injury and surgeries. You took on the American medical system and won. Sometimes when I am faced with a difficult decision, I ask myself, WWID, what would Isabel do? What would Isabel do? Quit? Because it's hard? I think not. So Isabel, take your great perseverance and determination, keep it with you. And by being a living example, give it to others as you have given it to me. Thank you. Isabel, while you were at seminary and active at the Oakland Church as a lay leader, you strengthened our church's ability to live up to our demanding vision of UU ministry. And you did this in part by quietly bringing out strengths and qualities of all the folks that you were working with. Now, as an ordained minister, I see you providing such sensitive guidance and empowerment to the congregations, to the congregants, in the churches you will be serving so that they will be even more effective as they live up to their bold vision of ministry. Isabel, your gifts of insight and empowerment are truly a blessing. Warm hugs. Isabel, please accept this token of love 
from the heart of this congregation to yours. The blessings that you have given us have been multitude. I'm going to pass this off now and it'll magically appear on screen. My name is Susan Vernig, and I was the intern team leader during the year Isabel served in Spokane as our intern minister. My name is Mary Lou Johnson, and I'm the president of the Spokane Alliance. We believe in the power of stories, and we will share two with you from Isabel's time with us. One about her work in our church and one about her work in our community. I'll never forget Isabel's first service with us where she shared a story for all ages that she had written, which you all have just heard about a girl who was a dancer. Then something sad happened and she ended up in a hospital. In the story, she kept hearing a nurse singing to her every little thing gonna be all right. Not just the children, but all of us were transfixed by this story and came to understand a powerful message for our lives with love and caring and support and acceptance and determination. Every little thing will be all right. Early on, Isabel, you gracefully accepted my invitation to do a one-on-one -on -one relational meeting, an organizing tool of the Spokane Alliance, used to engage people's passions so we could work for the common good. We met in our chapel on chairs facing each other, speckled sunlight coming through the pine trees. You were warm, you listened intently, you asked questions, you smiled frequently, and we're both thoughtful and passionate about the opportunity organizing presented. My heart sang. At a training later, you joyfully engaged and steadfastly supported the growth of others to change the world as it is to the world as it should be. Thank you, Isabel, for all the important lessons and passions you brought us. We send you out with our blessings for you to continue to share who you are and your amazing gifts. And I would like to thank Aaron for Aaron Fitzgerald, who was the co-leader of our intern team and a religious educator for many decades for passing over the gift from all of us in Spokane who love and respect you. Reverend Isabel, I want to say that again. It's such a joy to say that. Reverend Isabel, we bless you with these words adapted from our shared mission, which we wrote together with you. May you build and enjoy covenantal relationships among you, you women and you use of all genders that equip us all to be better co-conspirators and allies in this movement for collective liberation. And further, may you know that you come from a long line of women, which will continue further beyond you, committed to learning, growing, acting, connecting, committing, changing, and getting shit done. We claim you, we bless you, 
and we send you out into the world to be and do you. I am Eric Kamenetsky. I serve as the senior minister of the Edmonds Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Edmonds, Washington, alongside my partner in ministry, the Reverend Cecilia Kingman. My honor and task today is to bring greetings from our community to yours and to recognize and welcome Reverend Dr. Isabel Call as a colleague in our Unitarian Universalist ministry. But before we get to that, a little history. In his account of the practices of the New England churches in 1726, Cotton Mather described how near the end of the ceremony, an ordination council of ministers of neighboring churches would gather to give the right hand of fellowship, often accompanied by remarks he described as, quote, ample and copious, unquote. Instead of an ordaining council, we have the Ministerial Fellowship Committee which has bestowed its blessing upon the ministry of Isabel Call, and we have the Unitarian Universalist Ministers Association, to which Isabel belongs in membership and covenant. And for the ample and copious remarks, we have me. Isabel, the hand I give you today virtually is a hand I gladly anticipate giving you in person in the days to come. And this hand and that one represent a line of colleagues that stretches back through the ages. My charge today is to remind you that you are not alone. There are good ministers and good colleagues who are in this with you and you will lean on them and they will lean on you. My charge is also to remind you that the hand of fellowship is a physical embrace and a symbol of our interdependence. I know from working with you and from watching you that you know much about how to be a good colleague. I urge you to lean into that which you know to be important about collegiality, even on days when you don't wanna to go to a meeting with colleagues, even when it is hard, even when we have disappointed you. Every colleague I know who has gotten into trouble, either professionally or personally, has withdrawn from collegial life before the trouble happened, or at least before it became public. This hand of fellowship is but a symbol of the covenant we enter into with ourselves, with each other, and with the holy. I come here today to welcome you into the world of Unitarian Universalist ministerial colleagues, people who have been through some version of what you have been through to get here, and people who have gone through things that you may well go through in the future in order to stay. We are among those who are committed to having your back when and if needed. Isabel, by this ceremony of ordination, you now own your call to this ministry in service of a higher truth, in service of the principles of our liberal faith, in service of social justice, and in service of compassionate care for our congregations and our world. But you also own, own your call to this ministry in mutual partnership with your colleagues. In giving you the hand of fellowship, I welcome you into the ministry and into the tradition we share. I pledge our support and assistance in the holy work to which we are called, work that is as deeply demanding and challenging as it can be rewarding. But take heed, my friend. Do not accept this hand lightly, for in receiving it, you are acknowledging that your ministry is not brought by yourself alone. Rather, you are acknowledging that your ministry is one precious piece of a larger work that we bring together. And so by taking this hand of fellowship, you are pledging yourself to us, your colleagues, as we pledge ourselves to you, to support and encourage each other and to hold ourselves accountable to each other and to the congregations, institutions, and communities we serve for the faithful upholding of our guidelines of ethical conduct and professional practice. Turn to your colleagues when you are in need and we will be here. Be there for us when we are in need and we will know that we can turn to you. Be diligent 
and faithful in your ministry, Reverend Dr. Isabel Call. And now it is my privilege and joy to extend to you this hand of fellowship as a token of the friendship and love extended from all of us and to welcome you as an equal colleague in the Unitarian Universalist ministry and into the great work of the human spirit. May many blessings be upon you wherever your ministry may lead. Welcome, Isabel. Welcome. In our faith tradition, ministers are ordained by the congregation, as we all took part in a little bit earlier. This ordination service is, of course, about the calling of a new minister to our Unitarian Universalist ministry. But it is also so much bigger than any one person. An ordination service reminds us of our tradition, of those who came before us, walking the path of ministry, both ordained and lay. Ordination also reminds us of our connection to something larger, to our community, both near and far, and the importance of connection. We are fortunate in this time of technology that all those from around this country who played an important role in Isabel's life are able to zoom in and be a part of this celebration. While the laying on of hands is traditionally an in-person ritual, connecting our hands to the shoulder of the people in front of us, a visual of the interdependent web of which we are all a part, today we get to use the virtual web to send our love and support to Isabel. So I invite you now to find connection with the earth below you. You can place your feet on the ground, stand or sit, whatever is most comfortable for you. I invite you to close your eyes and feel the ground beneath you, supporting you, supporting all of us no matter where we are. This earth that nourishes us, feeds us, supports us, and holds us up also connects us. Just as you can look up to the starry night sky and imagine all of the other millions of people staring at the same starry sky, we feel the ground knowing that no matter where we currently are located, we are connected to Isabel here in Columbus, Ohio. 
as we take a collective breath in together. I invite Isabel's mother, Darielle, to join her on the chancel and place her hand on Isabel's shoulder, connecting each of us through the earth so that we may all together be sharing in this sacred ritual. I also invite us to take a moment here to acknowledge those who are not here, but whose love and care made us who we are and made it possible for us to be here. Isabel remembers her father, Malcolm Call. He would be so proud of her and maybe he would have come around this whole church thing. Perhaps he has wherever he is now. Isabel also remembers her grandmother, Lorraine Mayer, and her grandfather, Donald Mayer. As Bob finishes lighting the candles, I invite now the first UU pastoral team council and Reverend Marion into this sacred space to bear witness to the love and care that has shaped Isabel into a pastor, someone who can love and care for others. Please hold out your hands, sending your energy of support toward Isabel. And I now invite all of us, the members and friends of First UU Columbus, the members and friends of all the UU communities that have had a role in teaching, lifting up and supporting Isabel along her path, and all of the ministers, friends, family members, colleagues and community that love and support Isabel and her call to raise your hands, still feeling the connection to the ground beneath you as we lay our hands on Isabel. And if your arms do get tired during this time, feel free to rest them on your devices or hold them in your laps. Let the candles help us all to visualize all of the energy, prayers, well wishes, congratulations, and support pouring into this space. I'm so sorry, I pushed the wrong button on my microphone. Here we go. Reverend Dr. Isabel, <laughs> with our lifted hands and grounded feet, we send you our blessings, our good thoughts, our gathered energies. We invoke the holy, for this is a sacred moment of change and transition in this great dance of our lives as a community and a movement. This moment when we focus the dance on you and your ministry. Spirit of life, of love, of rhythm and harmony, movement and sway of the great web of life flow through us today and into this new minister of our tradition. Guide Reverend Dr. Isabel's hands and hearts and spirit in the days and years to come. Keep her steady on the rocky, treacherous path of courageous, heart-centered, creative compassion and guard her from the abyss of loneliness, despair and burnout. We invoke the ancestors, all those whose faithful service to our tradition and communities loved this moment into being, and all those who have loved Reverend Dr. Isabel into being, into who she is today. Beloved dead, be with us. 
comfort and companion us, lend us your wisdom and resilience, and keep calling us into responsibility and accountability and fellowship. We invoke the authority and ideals of our tradition and institutions. May this Unitarian Universalist minister carry forward the best of who we have been and care can be. We have often missed the mark and failed each other, yet we remain a vast supportive network of shared ministry of love in action. May you, Reverend Dr. Isabel, dance forward with us in ways that open all of us to new understanding and ancient insight, to inspiration and comfort and fierce, gentle challenge. May yeah. you remember always how much you are loved, how much we believe in you and your ministry as you do the work of healing, nurturing, supporting, lifting up, making more beauty and compassion and joy in the world. May it be so. Amen. Reverend Call, there's been a lot of talk about love here today, and that is beautiful and as it should be. Count me among the cloud of witnesses who love and support you and your ministry, dear Isabel. But don't mistake us as the source of your calling. We are too small for that. Often a charge to a newly ordained minister is practical. Maintain a spiritual practice. Take time for yourself and your relationships outside of ministry and make space in your life for other interests. Let me dispense with that by simply saying, do all of those things with care and intention, for they are essential, not only for a thriving ministry, but for your very life. Got it? Good, because that charge is too small for this moment. Indeed, there's another charge I want to offer you today. Although we typically use reverend as a title nowadays, and even think of its use as a privilege that obtains with ordination, traditionally, reverend is an honorific, signifying one who is revered. I charge you to remember this, reverend call, because being revered is very different from being loved. Your ordination is more than an affirmation of your inwardly experienced call to ministry and your fittedness for the role. It is an initiation that sets you apart. And here, I don't mean that it makes you better than anyone else, but rather this, it places upon you a particular and ongoing responsibility to the calling of life and love, to God's calling, and to our Unitarian Universalist tradition. As you already know, that responsibility often brings satisfaction and joy. Just as often, it is challenging, sometimes even heartbreaking. This is the life that has chosen you, and you have responded with reverence and humility, not just today, but every step along the way, accepting the challenges, rising to meet them, seeking out the support you have needed, asking good questions, opening your heart and your mind time and time again. You've got this, 
Isabel. And you had it long before today. Long before this ordination, you were revered. You were called forth, beloved. All that's left now is learning that unshakably in your own bones. Today, I charge you to keep dancing right into that learning. Today, I charge you to do what is already in your nature. Let this ordination and this calling work on you in the days and years to come, just as they have in the months and years of your path to this moment. Let this ordination and this calling continue to transform you Reverend Call, as you bring your full, holy, strong, tender, fierce, justice-making, learning, loving, creative, intuitive, brilliant, embodied self to this life that has chosen you, to this calling to serve life and love in the world through Unitarian Universalist ministry. No minister serves alone, and so it is fitting that the congregation with whom you serve also be charged with the ministry you share. The Reverend Nancy Reed McKee will offer that charge. Members of the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Columbus, I am honored to offer you this charge. We are all existing within a threshold right now, moving from one place in time and history to another. We are on the very verge of something new and it is transforming the way we understand ourselves, the way we know each other, and how we engage the world. What a daring time to call Isabel into ministry. In truth, we move through transitions and thresholds all the time, often without even making time to acknowledge the way that life shifts. Thresholds are places of uncertainty, feeling familiar and different at the same time. And the pandemic, comes during a larger social shift in which political systems are in upheaval. There's climate change, racial understandings, gender challenges, communication patterns, major, major challenges to our existential ways of being. These all confront us. We are all on the threshold of a whole new world. We will emerge from this change. How we will emerge will impact our future. It is these key moments that we can feel much more keenly how our small actions and connections are part of something even bigger. We are part of the patterns that become ecosystems and become societies. We are small seemingly insignificant, but significant at the same time. The decisions we make can have an impact because each of our actions is connected to all our other actions along with the actions of others. We are all, each of us, part of this interdependent web of life. Adrian Marie Brown, who uses they, them pronouns writes in their book, Emergent Strategy, about the recognition that what we do matters because we are not separate. Each of our simple actions become part of a complex pattern and system. They explain that we may not see what our emergence will eventually look like. A group of caterpillars may not see future in their flight. And we may not see how we're interdependent. Oak trees don't set an intention. 
to hold tight to each other, but their roots reach for each other, intertwining. And through this reliance, they weave, they weather winds that threaten to blow over individual trees. Single cells of a body don't know what civilization might be possible, but they divide and they interact and then they discover their purpose. They might be a tongue or they might be a toenail, but they serve that purpose. Brown goes on to explain that what we do matters. We practice at a small scale what we most want to see at the universal level because we are part of the whole. As you emerge from this threshold in history, might this be a unique, precious opportunity to evaluate the patterns of your life, to see them as part of the whole web of existence, knowing that what you do is part of all of us. What you do matters. How you move in the world, how you behave and act, it all is part of the pattern that we are all intertwined with. This is the charge I put to you today to practice at a small scale what you want the world to be. You begin with ordaining someone to holy leadership. You begin by seeing yourself as part of this complex pattern and asserting your responsibility to the whole. Bless you this day. Bless your intentions and your being part of the service to the greater Unitarian Universalist faith. And now I welcome you into this next section, listening to Yesay's Barnwell's song.
If the people who are supposed to be doing the chalice extinguishing would please turn on their cameras. Let's extinguish the chalice, the people who might be intending to be here, I'm sure, are with us in spirit. We extinguish this chalice, but not the stories told by its light. We extinguish this chalice, but not the memory of the dance of its flames. We extinguish this chalice, having been changed by its light, heat, and meaning. We honor the fire of ritual and the energy of togetherness by making space too for darkness and rest, reflection and discernment. We bless Isabel with our faith in her inner light, emboldened by her faith in ours knowing that even when we are separate, we have each other. I speak now to close our service as the person I've always been and also as someone changed by this ritual. I speak with gratitude for your trust, your witness to my transformation, your investment in my ministry, and your hope for our shared future. I invite you to join me in this abundant joy. There is plenty to go around. Join me in allowing the beauty of this moment to seep in. We've been at this ritual for a long time now, so I encourage you to get up out of your stillness and wiggle a bit, make some space in your body for this joy. Let it fill up not just your heart and mind, your eyes and ears. Let it spill into your legs and arms and in whatever way your body allows. All bodies welcome, let's dance. We're in this together, this ministry thing. Bring you and I'll bring me and let it be a dance. Mm -hmm. 
song is about the spinning of the universe and birth and death and uh, like the whole deal as one dance in which you're invited to find your place and take the next step. One, two, three, four, dance. Dance your joy, dance your sorrow, dance your blessing, dance your dreams, dance your love. Dance the shadows and the light, dance the day, dance the night, dance the blindness and the sight, and dance the earth. Everything you've ever known is a seed that once was grown, and it sprouted and it's grown. It all conspires to keep you in the dance. 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 When you get your invitation, you don't know where it will be. You only know it means you have a chance. Every quarter, every hour you spend at work, nothing is outside the dance. All you do is standing still. The thinker and the thought are in the dance. You'll always be a part of it. It's not an act of will. Let go and you'll be caught up in the dance. You'll never know the number of the steps you get to take. The caller doesn't call them in advance. You'll never know the meaning, but please make no mistake. The wisdom of the
Thank you, Eric McEwen. Thank you, everybody dancing. Uh, thank you for the people who got spotlighted so I got to see them dancing. Ah, this concludes our ceremony. Uh, you are welcome to hang out. Check out these thank yous. Such amazing support we've had for the ceremony. Ah, just so much love. Um, and I'll be around for a few minutes letting everybody know, members of the congregation, I'll also be at coffee hour tomorrow so we can celebrate together and just thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Ooh. We love you. Switching to gallery view so I can see as many faces as possible at once. Yeah. Thank you for letting your joy shine out. Mm -hmm. Look at all those people. Look at all these people. <laughs> all the best to you, Isabel, from Toronto. And uh, from Jeannie, who couldn't make it. Oh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we're going to get it tomorrow. Oh. Hi, Isabel. <laughs> from College Station, Texas. <laughs> Not all the screens to find people. Hello. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, man. You are amazing. Thank You're amazing. You. Oh, it's so nice to see you. Congratulations, <laughs> Isabel. Thank you, Alexi. So glad to be here. Mm -hmm. The beautiful service. Thank you, Kate. Okay. Isabel Page sends her love. Lovely. My first dance buddy. Okay. Isabel, we're so pleased to share this time with you. I'm so glad you're here, Meg. My beloved piano teacher. <laughs> love you, friend. Good to see you. Sonia, thank you. Good to see you. Thank you for dancing. My pleasure. I can't wait to meet you in person, Isabel. Thank you, Karen. Karen was our lead choreographer for the for the ordination. Yay. Thank you. Love you, Isabel. I'm so joyful day to celebrate your big ordination celebration. Thank you, Marianne. Be there for yours. Yep. This is Mel. Salamat Jalang from Indonesia. Ah, Sama Sama. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. And I love you very much. Hey, Isabel. Hi, Sally. Hi, Bill. Bill Blakely. All right, just want to let you know there was one curmudgeon here that didn't dance. Okay. <laughs> I, I enjoyed your service, and I'm so proud of you. And all the best to you, dear. Thank you, Bill. Isabel, congratulations. What a beautiful ritual ceremony and celebration and from all of us in Spokane we we wrap our arms around you as your colleagues have wrapped your our stole around you mm -hmm. many congratulations and so many blessings just so delighted Isabel to be with you in this moment we love you <laughs> We love you, Isabel. 
such a beautiful Hi, service. Hi, <laughs> Charlie, I wish you were here with us. I'll have to do do a chalice lighting at home with the, all three of us live. He's muted. I wish I was there too. Um, yeah. Can't wait to see you again. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, Isabel. Hi, Denaya. Thank you so much for helping with the Time for All Ages. I loved your picture. Isabel, in the benediction, you said something about the beauty of this moment, and I could see it in your face. You were just glowing. Isabel, in case you haven't noticed, Dusty is here from our intern team. Lovely. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Dusty. Congratulations. It's really good to see you uh, from afar. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Isabel. It's so good to get to share this with you. Thank you, Mira. And while while we were ordaining you, I made my mandala today as my prayer for you. <sighs> Gorgeous. Happy, happy ordination. Thank you. See. Oh my gosh. I'm just sort of overwhelmed. This is like the receiving line, but it's like all at once it's like this non-linear <laughs> like flood of receiving line the receiving dance yes <laughs> wow 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 thank you yeah dusty coming from spokan i see eric i see ina and kamish Hey, Daria, congratulations to you. Everybody saying congratulations to Isabel. I mean, congratulations to you, too. <laughs> Mostly. See ya. I'll call you sometime this weekend. Bye. Then. <laughs> we had Reverend Marion, too. Is she here? She was, she was here. I'm sure she'll be back. <laughs> yes. Ah. Thank you all so much. I'm gonna Thank save you. the I'm gonna save the chat so I can read what people are writing to. They're turning out the lights. <laughs> Reverend Marion, there you are. I want to say congratulations, Isabel. We've only spoke to each other just one time on one phone call, but that one phone call. Um, thank you for that one phone call. You have no idea what how you helped me. It was just mm -hmm. one phone call. I will never forget you. Congratulations. I love this church. <laughs> the people here are just amazing. Thank you. But I'm got to help myself out of my wheelchair so I can get some things done. Congratulations. I cannot wait until the doors are open. I will be there. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Jerry. I'm glad that you're here. And Isabel, we are so thrilled to have you as part of the First UU um, ministerial team. It's just wonderful and welcome. Congratulations. And we couldn't be more proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Marion. What a space today. Congratulations, Isabel. And I, I'm glad our paths crossed just enough that you remembered my song and that I could be part of this today. It, it's an honor to be part of this today. And what a joyful occasion. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. John Muir, we get to see your face from behind the, behind the tech screen. Thank you so much for coordinating this magic you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, we, um, this is a new kind of service as we're 
learning pandemic and shifting into perhaps hybrid. This is, we, we usually do webinars. And so to have a Zoom meeting, it's a, we're trying a different thing for this one. Um, we just danced through it. Isabel and Darielle, it's so nice to see you. We welcomed you on your very first day and uh, we're just so excited for today. Congratulations. I think I would like to get my picture taken while I still have the glow <laughs> of the ordination. <laughs> I want to say hi and it's me. still sunny and pretty out. You should go quick mm -hmm. before the rain gets here. We love you, Reverend Dr. Isabel. Yes, <laughs> seconding that. I see you, Chloe. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of you, and it's really amazing to see you in your bigger community. So thank you for making it possible for us all to be here around you. Mm -hmm. Love you. Mm -hmm. Eric, can I meet that little one on your lap? Yes, oh, Lily. Hello. Hello. Lovely. Can you say hi? She probably can't say hi. <laughs> <laughs> we can say hi to her. <laughs> hi. Well, thank you all so much. Congratulations, Isabel. So, so good to see you, Eric. So good to see everybody. So much love. Mm -hmm. Get your picture taken. Congratulations. So till till we meet again, some of us tomorrow and some of us soon after that, I hope. Blessings to you all. Thank you for the blessings to me.